The, the way I photograph, or why I photograph, is a sideways glance. I came across this actually in the pool when I was, I swim a lot, when I was swimming and I turned my head and I was glimpsing another swimmer and another swimmer and another swimmer. And I thought, this is how I see. I will photograph a forensic facial reconstruction. I will photograph the neighbors and anything in between. The connective thread between all of those is me kind of breathing life into something, not recognized as important. I think that being raised as a gay man in the 60s, when things were not the way they are today, that I developed a furtive glance because you, you, you couldn't stare directly at someone that was the object of your desire. It had to be veiled in some way. I had a 500 millimeter lens that I inherited and had no idea what to do with it. I was gonna get rid of it actually, put it on my camera and looked out the window and there were my neighbors. You look up at buildings and you know there are people up there and you may see someone in a window, but it, it, it doesn't occur to you that it is a, a, a whole life in there. So I began photographing the neighbors and what I would do is have a camera and the lens, the giant lens, uh, set up at all times. The building's about 50 feet away from me, it's in New York City, and it's all glass. The sun was raking across the glass, and there was someone walking through the room. I took the picture, and when I, I looked back at the playback, I thought, I'm gonna keep the lens, and I think I've discovered something that I need to do. I was looking, I realized, for images of what we are when we're alone. And I wanted to record these tiny nuances, these, you know, the everyday life of someone, kind of the turn of the elbow, the turn of the head, the lifting of something, the handing of a glass to someone. Because I, th I thought in that, I had found the humanity of these people.